You don't believe in no fate, uh, every day digging the grave, uh, stepping up here with the stakes, uh, city of dreams, city of Hello and welcome to Night City Wire episode 5, the show from us at CD Projekt Red where we talk about all things Cyberpunk 2077. Now we're going to start today's episode with a new trailer that will take a closer look at Johnny Silverhand before we go behind the scenes with Keanu Reeves and have a chat to English adaptation director Boris who will tell us exactly what it was like to work with him. Then we'll be exploring the original score and talking about some of the radio stations you might listen to while driving around Night City. Before we take a look at the Jolly technology, which is powering facial animation in Cyberpunk, and unveil a new My Reward scheme, which anyone can take part in, no matter which platform you'll be playing Cyberpunk on. We'll then wrap up today's episode with a brand new gameplay trailer. It's a busy episode, and it will be our final episode of Night City Wire before the game launches on December 10th. So, let's get going. Where'd you even come from? How are we even talking? Gotta get out of here, understand? And I'll kill anyone who gets in my way. You weren't dreaming, B. Those were memories. You two are connected in a way I can't make head or tail of. Who? Me and who, Vic? Silverhand. Johnny Silverhand. Real talk of the town back in my day. He died like forever ago. You need to say there's an actual terrorist in my head. Right now. He'd burn down half the city just to prove he was right. And burn the other half just for fun. What do you want from me? Huh. Destroy Arasaka. I don't even know what that means. Do whatever it takes to stop him, defeat him, gut him. He already tried to take over your body. You know, just for a little while. Hear me, asshole? A bullet to the fucking brain! Get out! Just get the fuck out! Tell me how to get rid of it. You don't have much time left. You're a dick, you know? And you're a cunt. Maybe we'll fit together after all. Sometimes we like to share things with you, and other times we like to keep secrets, and it can be worth it for that big reveal. Pretty sure nobody was expecting to see Keanu Reeves on stage at E3 2019. So let's go behind the scenes to see how Keanu Reeves brought rocker boy Johnny Silverhand to life. You could say it's breathtaking. Cyberpunk 2077, Johnny Silverhand. I've had the opportunity to do voiceover a few times. I'd worked on a cartoon. I had done some documentaries. I'd never done this much. You know you don't gotta speak out loud to talk to me. And I've processed some shit. Changed my mind. Don't want you dead anymore. You know, and got to play a character in so many kind of different ways because of different paths or threads or choices. So you almost get to play one moment, say you have a decision. Would you take a bullet for it? With three different behavioral attitudes. So that was fun. You know, he's uh, Johnny's either a dick or he's happy, or he's trying to convince. Know why? Because you've always been a fucking pussy, Carrie. So it's been fun, and that was kind of what I was interested in. You know, the different options that the game could play. You know, playing the same person, but with different versions of them. Motion capture, baby. Johnny Silverhand. Uh, so one of the first elements that I was involved in with the game was motion capture. I've done a, a fair bit of motion capture. I did it with uh, in the Matrix films, so to start doing the motion capture for Johnny, it was all very familiar to me. 
The only difference, I think, technologically was how close they were going to real-time review. But creatively, it was very familiar in the sense of starting a, a library of, of gesture and the toolbox, let's say, for the animators to work with for the character. So you get to see Johnny as the rock star, you know, you hear about his military past, you know, and he's fighting for his survival. Yeah. So he's kind of got all of these things leading into the moment of this guy. It's really a kind of an interpretation, because I think there's a Johnny Silverhand in all of us. He's got a lot of energy. He's got a good sense of humor, if not a little dark at times. He's very passionate, he cares, you know, it's, um, He's kind of naive, but he's also super experienced in life. He's got certainly an appetite for life. My oh, man! No, you're wrong! He wants to change the world, you know? But he has a cause that he wants to fight against the corpocracy. Come on! Don't tell me you're not interested. He's kind of looking for a different kind of freedom. Corps have long controlled our lives, taken lots. And now they're after our souls. At least I believed in something bigger. At least I had a cause. What CD Projekt Red has shared with me in the way that they talk about the game and what I've seen is that it's got a, a lot of freedom. There's so many different paths that you can play the game on. But it's not just quests of paths. It's like, who are you? How do you want to play the character? If I gotta kill, I'll kill. If I need your body, I'll fucking take it. You can go into action, you can go into mystery, you can problem solve in different ways. And where you go in this world, there's so much detail. There's so many different things that you can go off into that are really interesting um, and fun. There's a real drama to the game and emotional stakes to it. And then there's lighter sides to it. And of course, the music, production design, technologically, how cutting edge it is. I don't think there'll be a game that looks like this. Yeah, it's intense. I take the driver, you get his side too. Good job. Yeah. Bye-bye. Before we get into what it was like to actually work with Keanu Reeves, was it always him that you imagined as Johnny Silverhand? Was there anybody else that you ever considered having for the role? Yeah, Holly, it was a long, arduous, extended uh, process to imagine uh, what Johnny Silverhand is supposed to look like, what he's supposed to sound like, what he's supposed to act like. Everybody and their great-grandmother seemed to have an idea. And the process actually involved a lot of people, the game director, uh, character artists, writers, marketing staff. Uh, I could go on. Uh, you know, we cast a pretty broad net initially. Uh, we considered actors. We considered uh, enlisting uh, actual rock stars, you know, band frontmen to play the role. At one point, we even toyed with the idea of taking and reviving uh, a recently deceased, longtime luminary of the recording industry. Now, some might say that it was a pipe dream to assume that we could do that, technologically other or otherwise. Well, uh, I'll see you uh, that pipe dream and raise you another, because uh, one could easily say that it was a pipe dream to assume that we could successfully pitch to and ultimately enlist Keanu Reeves to play the role. Now, I'm sure this is on everybody's mind right now, but what was it actually like to work with Keanu Reeves? Because even he said in the video, this was like nothing he'd ever done before. A question uh, that I'm sure uh, anybody who gets to work with Keanu has to answer, and I get where it comes from. Keanu is a consummate professional. When he's at work, he's at work. He's completely and utterly focused. To that work, he brings his talent, he brings his art, his technical skill, and overwhelming charm. And yes, the scale and the complexity were and are dazzling. Uh, Non-linearities, the variation in attitude, mood, emotion that are required to achieve them, they can be difficult to get your head around. 
And if you take all of Johnny Silverhand's bits, uh, you know, his screen time, it's like doing the equivalent of many, many feature film roles put together. And we covered all that in uh, a handful of mocap sessions and under two dozen VO recording sessions, four to six hours each. Um, and that took focus, it took control, it took dedication, all of which uh, Keanu provided in heaps. So tell us a little bit more about the character of Johnny Silverhand and why he's important to the story, but also why it's important to have him played by like such a powerful personality. Okay, uh, how do I do this without uh, spoiling too much uh, for gamers? In the broadest sense, I'd say Johnny Silverhand is a co-protagonist of the game rather than uh, a sidekick. I mean, there are buddy bits in the game, uh, but uh, in the end, uh, Johnny has an agenda and he pursues it. And V has an agenda and has to pursue that. And for, to get things done, V and Johnny have to work together. Things, some of the things they do are V's and some of the things they do are Johnny's and some of them are important to both of them. That uh, bonds gamers, I think, to both characters. Uh, both characters' agendas become equally important. Uh, both characters' continued existence becomes equally important. For any a gamer or viewer or reader, what you have to do is create that bond between them and the protagonist or protagonist. You have to make uh, those characters understandable to them, likable to them, lovable to them. With that understanding, even when they do something not entirely admirable or say something uh, reprehensible, uh, you stay committed, you stay involved, you stay bonded to them. And there's no denying casting uh, a powerful personality, somebody who exudes uh, charm by the truckload, helps to further all that. So Boris, can you tell us, like, what does Keanu bring to Johnny Silverhand? What, what Keanu brings to Johnny Silverhand is nothing more and nothing less than Keanu. Uh, I could parse that into a string of adjectives, but I uh, kind of think that would be borderline insulting because it wouldn't begin to do him justice. To anybody who's seen the applicable movies, uh, Neo is Keanu, Keanu is Neo. John Wick is Keanu, Keanu is John Wick. John Constantine, Johnny Mnemonic, Jonathan Harker, Johnny Utah, they're all Keanu. And to anyone who will play Cyberpunk 2077, Johnny Silverhand will be Keanu. To my mind, at least, star power is a fact and a, uh, an important factor for uh, broad sections of the audience out there. So can you give us more information about the process of motion capture, right? Because we saw you in the video, you know, doing some of it, but really, how does it work? Uh, I, I wish I could, Holly, but I'm really no mocap expert <laughs> and I can, I, I, I can basically tell you what the day uh, looked like, what the process looked like to me. Uh, to me, it was a fine day in LA and uh, I put on a wonky looking uh, bodysuit with uh, uh, globules all over it and I put on the head cam and then we proceeded to block and then play out scenes between V and Johnny and we did it over and over and over again. As we did that, I must have poked Johnny uh, in the chest hundreds of times uh, and I must have uh, yelled fuck off at Johnny 35 times, you know. Uh, and, uh, well, I never expected to be doing any of that. No, I never imagined I'd be doing any of that. Well, Boris, thank you so much for joining us. I, your voice in the studio is quite iconic. So whenever I talk to you, I feel like I'm in a trailer. It's amazing. It's not all that. It's not all that, Holly. Thank you. Well, from uh, Soviet era synthesizers to body heat radio, it's time to explore the original score and just some of the radio stations you'll be listening to when you're driving around Night City. Score is the main vessel of emotions in both movies and video games, and Cyberpunk 2077 is no different. It actually took us a long time to find the right color of the music. Getting that sound together is almost as important as the actual look of the game itself, because music is really helping you feel this emotional connection to the game.
So one of the main ideas was to take the cyberpunk genre out of the 80s and give it a 90s flair. We took elements from rave, IDM, industrial, and make them fit our narrative purposes. We've decided that close to 100% of our music would be purely electronic. That's why we tried to stick to analog synths as much as possible, so it's got a warmth to it. I'm super proud of the team we've managed to gather for this project. For me, it was basically my own personal aesthetic matching the aesthetic of the game. When I read the brief, I was like, oh, this is going to be great. I can be myself, I can make music, and it, it come from an honest place. I love the fact that the music in this game is so varied. So we have some tracks that are super dirty, super heavy, and then we have some tracks that are very beautiful and ambient. I'm using all kinds of different effects. So it's been uh, great to be able to experiment with the sound and the style. It's my first time actually doing any drum tracking for a video game. It's been really exciting, it's been a lot of fun. It's all about making you feel like a perfect killing machine. Mm -hmm. Because that's, that's what you are, basically. Well, I can do that all day long, so you'll just, you'll just, you'll just have to tell me what you like and what you don't like. Cool, okay. It's not going to sound like one thing, depending on what part of the city you're in. We basically scored every quest pretty much with custom assets created specifically for that quest. We ended up having over seven and a half hours of music in, in Cyberpunk. Working on Cyberpunk has just been insane. <laughs> um, I can seriously say that I've never worked with such a bunch of mad people in my life and mad brilliant. The gear that we use comes out of boutique shops or they are vintage synthesizers like this Polyvox. I really hope all this effort put into creating this score pays off with satisfying and enjoyable listening and gaming experience. Hello, Night City! What shaking Night Good City! Good morning, Night City! Your man, Stan here! Ooh, I love this town! Love it like you might love a mother who popped you out on the steps of an orphanage once and now stops you to ask if you got a smoke for her! And now, a shout out to all the lowlifes over at the Atlantis! Ladies and gents, here's that all time classic in Night City! Soundtrack is one of the key elements we use to build believable worlds. We've invited artists from around the world, incredible talents, incredible musicians, to write and produce songs just for us for this project. The soundtrack for Cyberpunk is insane. So the soundtrack being all the songs that they've got going on, whether it's on the radio or on the background, all these just amazing bands. We've got over 150 custom genre bending tracks all waiting for you to discover them by yourselves. You know, the reason I want to be a part of Cyberpunk is, well, basically I know The Witcher is super sick and then I actually got to play a preview of the game, which was fucking incredible. I've always wanted to do something connected to a video game, so I was pretty excited when this came in and it was like an instant yes. I was kind of imagining what it would be like being a character in that game. The person that's a musician in this world in this time has grew up in that space. This isn't just some fun shit, there's also an intellectual and spiritual history to this world that's been constructed for you, you know? We want to provide you with the soundtrack to fucking shit up. Like, how could you not want to be a part of that? For those of you who can't wait to hear more from our composers, we're going to be releasing a special six track Cyberpunk 2077 EP featuring tracks from the game's original score onto streaming services for you to enjoy for free. And they'll be live at the end of this episode so you can give them a listen later. In addition, if you're planning on live streaming Cyberpunk, or if you just want to make videos, we want to introduce you to a new mode that will allow you to disable certain copyrighted tracks. We know that for content creators, licensed music can sometimes be problematic. So with this new mode, you'll be able to disable a small number of selected tracks which could cause some issues, replacing them with a different song, helping to avoid any problems. 
If you're going to be live streaming from console, this will start automatically, but you can toggle it on and off in the options as needed. And for PC players, you'll be able to turn it on and off in the game options. Don't forget, as with all episodes of Night City Wire, if you're tuning in late or if you just want to watch anything again, we will be uploading everything to our channels soon. Now from Polish to Chinese. When Cyberpunk launches, it will have VO in 10 different languages. So we're gonna take a closer look at the Jali technology, which is ensuring each and every one is as authentic as possible. So hi, my name is Sarah Watling. I am the CEO of Jolly Research in Toronto, Ontario. In this video, we're gonna show you a little bit about Jolly the software uh, and Jolly in action within the world of Cyberpunk 2077. Rayfield's mine. Jolly is a suite of tools and a suite of services uh, that uh, result in uh, what we think is the coolest and best uh, and highest quality facial performance on characters. Oh, is that supposed to sound familiar? It's automatically generated on a face based on um, audio dialogue, audio speech from a voice actor. Slow, deep breaths. Your cortisol and adrenaline spiked, but the soft activated your hormone blockers. Nothing happened. You're alive and well. What Jolly tries to do is it tries to get to the root of what is being expressed in the vocal performance and put that on a 3D character. That's Rogue. Best fixer in all the Night City. There is just an incredible amount of performance in this game. Next, sure. A procedural solution allows you to animate over and over and over again at tremendous scale. Jolly is what powers every single character in the game of Cyberpunk 2077 in all of the languages that the game has been localized for. All you're doing is changing an attribute. For example, speech style. If you want your character to, to shout instead of mumble, instead of issuing a set of commands that redo the animation, instead you click an attribute going from, in this case, mumble to shout. But you walk, you bleed. But you walk, you bleed. But you walk, you bleed. If the lip sync is right, you don't notice. If the faces match and match the performance, you don't notice because you're too busy paying attention to how awesome the game is, how much you care about these characters, how much, what, what you're going to do. And that's what we want. That to me is, that's, that's the sizzle. Don't you know you owe the sheriff a word when you pay his town a visit? To tell him what's brought you here. Maybe even over a cup of coffee. Now we're excited to reveal digital and in-game rewards for Cyberpunk 2077. It's our way of saying thank you for your support. Now, every copy of the game comes with digital downloadable goodies such as the art book, the original score, and a digital comic, all from the Cyberpunk universe. But there's more. You can also claim in-game items for Cyberpunk 2077. For example, you could be rocking the Wolf School jacket for simply connecting the game to your GOG account. And if you have other CD Projekt Red games, such as The Witcher or Gwent, you can get even more. And it works both ways. If you connect the game to your GOG account, you can also unlock special in-game items for Gwent, The Witcher card game, such as the samurai-inspired card and coin back, and the breathtaking title. Now, this new My Reward program is for everybody. No matter which platform you're playing Cyberpunk on, you'll be able to get your digital goodies and in-game items. Now, this is just the beginning and there'll be more items coming in the future and we'll have more information on My Rewards soon. As always, don't forget that if you've missed anything or if you just want to watch again, we will be uploading everything to our channels soon. So before we take a look at that new gameplay trailer, we just want to reveal that a number of games media from all over the world have been playing Cyberpunk 2077, and you'll be able to read their latest impressions when this episode of Night City Wire finishes, so you can go and check them out. So now, let's wrap up this episode and take a look at that brand new gameplay trailer. 
They got a lock on us. Engine's been hit. Get us out of here. I'm losing control. <laughs> At CD Projekt Red, we dedicate ourselves to telling immersive stories. Yet with every new project, we set out to make our games bigger, more complex, deeply engaging. Come on, V. Let's get you home. Cyberpunk 2077 marries exploration of a vast open world with kinetic combat, story-changing player choices, and robust character development. All to bring you into our vision of the dark future. You ever feel like the city doesn't give you a choice? You either burn alive in it, or you never existed at all. The year is 2077. An economic crisis culminating in nuclear conflict has left America in pieces. With most of the continent degenerating into lawless war zones, people from all over have converged on the already overcrowded Night City, one of the world's last great megalopolises. A hub amassing the best in resources and know-how, and home to manufacturers of cutting-edge technologies, Night City continues to offer the promise of a civilized future. What? No, no, this isn't happening. Oh, but it is. But in the city streets, a merciless struggle for power rages. Gangs, corporate agents, hustlers, religious cultists, politicians, and all manner of criminals strive to outplay one another. Ordinary people get caught in the crossfire. Looking for justice in Night City. I seek revenge. Much more feasible here. In this world, consumed by never-ending conflict, sometimes only an outsider will get the job done. Elizabeth tells me you have answers for us. I'm all ears. And that's you, an urban mercenary, a cyber-enhanced gun for hire. You seem to understand each other. Take this, too. As a mercenary, you swear no allegiance. You've chosen the outlaw life and trust that your abilities will carry you up Night City's ruthless underground social ladder. Heart of Night City. That's it right there. To thrive as a merc, you need the right combination of gear, skills, and reputation. Dex had a load to say about you. I hope he wasn't overselling. With the money you earn, you can turn yourself into a living weapon, buying guns and enhancements in the hundreds. As you roam the city streets, you gain the experience you need to upgrade abilities and acquire perks. Combine the right skills and gear to create a gunslinger with inhuman reflexes. A stealthy netrunner with command of all surrounding tech. Or practically anyone in between. In Cyberpunk 2077, you steal a prototype biochip that can set you up for life. Being filthy rich. When its sealed container is ruptured, the only way to prevent the biochip from failing is to slot it into your head. It turns out it contains the digitized soul of Johnny Silverhand, a dead rocker boy with violence on his mind. You mean to say there's an actual terrorist in my head right now? He's out for revenge aims to bring down the megacorp that made the chip. Do whatever it takes to stop him, defeat him, gut him. What is in your head can shift the balance of power in Night City. The high and mighty will do anything to lay their hands on it. Told you I'd end you someday. The choices you make will shape your story and determine how events unfold. V, you gotta take them down. That's why we're here. But not everything in Night City is a matter of life and death. Sometimes it's about style, choosing your look, your ride, your pastime, who's at your side. Choosing how you spend your dirty money. Welcome to the next generation of open world adventure. Immerse yourself in Cyberpunk 2077.